Hey, I've been gone for two weeks. I got grass that's overgrown. I got weeds and the sweet potatoes. I got weeds and the collards and the Brussels sprouts. The deal has, <laughs> has uh, bolted. Uh, my uh, herb garden is uh, suffering. Uh, potatoes that need healing, compost grafts that need to be put in. So let's just take a tour and go around and do all the different things we need and then we'll just move from there. Hey, let's start off with the collards, Brussels sprouts, beets in between, which I know you can't see, sweet potatoes, I have flowers coming on them, and I'm gonna actually pick off the flowers, which might seem counterintuitive to you, but it's not because these sweet potatoes will concentrate on flowering versus making the tubers that are down below. So. We are going to start by picking off the yellow leaves here. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see the white flies that are coming up that turn into cabbage moss. And you're going to see me intentionally throw the leaves and the decaying material over on the lawn over there. I even got some weeds that are in here. And later on, we'll actually pick some collard greens. I have beets inside here, but the collard greens have grown so big, the Brussels sprouts have grown so big that they're covering over the beets and they're not getting enough sun. So they are growing extremely slow. And you're wondering, okay, why is he throwing that on the grass over there? Because I'm going to mulch it with the lawnmower, let it decay and I'm gonna plant another bed over there next year. I'm gonna build another raised bed so that I can grow even more things because of the success that we had this year. Uh, you'll see a picture later on of the Brussels sprouts showing you how they have grown and the sprouts are actually starting to develop. But I have an individual picture to show you that. And I'm gonna continue with getting some of these weeds out again. Organic matter is organic matter. It's gonna break down, and remember, it's no dead gardening. So if this breaks down and I mulch it, it's gonna turn into compost, which is in the ground, right where I'm beginning the new bed. As you can see over here, I told you, I had these purple flowers, some weeding. I picked the weeds up off the pathway, and these purple flowers, yeah, yeah, I know they're pretty. Take them inside, put them in some water, a bowl. I'm not getting ready to do that because what's happening is if the plant starts concentrating on making flowers, it's not going to make the tubers that uh, we want for sweet potatoes. And I don't want, I, I, pretty flowers are awesome and they are great, but I like eating, as you can tell. So I want the sweet potatoes. So. I'm going to take these flowers off. And again, for all you great horticulturists, you can take them inside, you put them in water. Think about, you know what, what I'm getting ready to do? I just thought about it. I'm going to take these and float them in a bowl of water, and I'm going to make a centerpiece for the table for it. I just thought of that, and that's what I'm going to do make a centerpiece for the table. So I'm not going to waste, so you don't have to give me 10,000 comments and yell at me and say I'm wasting God's stuff, because I'm not. But I'm gonna take these along with some nasteriums that are out there and make a beautiful centerpiece in a floating water bowl. How about that? And then I keep everybody happy. And then it'll be a beautiful sight. Getting these weeds out. I 
I don't see. Oh, I see some more flowers on the outside of it. Because again, I wanted to concentrate on making tubers. And trying not to disturb the root system when I pull these weeds out or pull the vines from underneath the ground because you know that's where the tubers are planted at or develop at. This is called pigweed. Do you know that this is actually edible? Uh, I haven't tried it. Um, during my research, I found out that it's mostly edible and people have used it in time of famine to not starve to death. But we aren't there yet and prayerfully we'll never be there. Hey, the Tasmania chocolate tomatoes, look, got some ripening, got nice sized ones here. We got another Tasmanian chocolate up here. Uh, you see some more ripening in there. Mary goes behind protecting everything. Potato plant is starting to die. We're going to wait another couple of weeks and then we're going to flip those out. More Tasmanian chocolate tomatoes. I am happy to finally see the San Marzano tomato has started ripening. These are small, but there are some big ones back there. And I'll show you an individual picture of those. Another Tasmanian chocolate. And on the other side, which I'll show you pictures, I'm just going to it. We got California Bell, which are growing real heartily. The piece of my heart and the jalapeno pepper. We're doing good. We cleaned up the beds and over here, which I don't know if I showed you, but I'll get a picture to you. Uh, I got mustard spinach that's growing. Okay. And that's it. We're here at another episode of Cutting It Up with Michael. Today we're going to do chicken swarmer. This recipe calls for four chicken breasts, fresh onion, fresh green pepper, fresh carrots, fresh garlic, my garlic oil, green curry sauce green curry paste, turmeric powder, fresh ginger, smoked paprika, poultry seasoning, nutmeg, cinnamon, tarragon, onion powder, garlic powder, chili powder. I'm going to start by pouring the green pepper. We want to get the ribs and the seeds out. And we remember we would save everything from compost for our garden. Now we're going to actually julienne the green peppers. After you finish Julian, just put them in the bowl with the chicken.
Now let's cut up a fresh onion. We're just going to cut them into half moon circles. quarter of an inch in width. Now let's put the onions inside the bowl with the chicken. Now let's take the carrots and we're going to julienne the carrots. Now that's that garlic oil. Let's take some fresh garlic from this oil and chop it finely.
Okay, let's add all the other ingredients. Now let's take two tablespoons of the green curry paste. Then let's add a half a cup of sour cream. Here you can substitute tahini paste if you want, um, and that makes it more authentic or more Mediterranean. Let's use our hands to mix it all together. I forgot the salt. I'm going to have to mix it again. Let's take everything out that's been mixed and put it in a Ziploc bag. Push out as much air as you can and let it marinate overnight up to 72 hours if you would like. Longer it's marinade, the more flavorful it becomes. Today I use a combination of hardwood, mesquite, charcoal, and hickory charcoal. Dump your charcoal to 
one side because we're going to be doing direct cooking today. But we need a side that's going to be cool so that we can allow the chicken breast to completely cook on the cool side after we have seared them on direct heat. You do about 90% of the cooking on direct heat and the last 10% will have residual heat that will cook it to the 165 degrees that it needs to be. The vegetables that we originally sliced, the fresh vegetables, are going into a cast iron skillet and then they will be cooked together. Take some naan bread and warm it up on the grill. And here you have it. You can take some tetrazinki sauce or some mayonnaise or nothing and fold it inside the pita and enjoy. Thanks for joining us again.